Shalom, it's Mariah Aliza with Mariah Shalee Village and today I'm shooting this video to share our math selections or our math curricula for the 2018-2019 school year. So I want to start by saying that our math, we tend to like split. So we have like his core math and then we always add an element of like business and finance to it. At least I've been doing that since grade five. So we're getting ready to go into seventh grade. And so I'm keeping up with that, um, adding that business and finance portion um, inside of our regular core math. He loves it. He has a knack for it. And so it just helps for him to, during his math studies, be able to study business and finance. So I'm going to... Um, share our materials and divide it up in that way. So beginning with our core, we have pretty much two things. The first is um, teaching textbooks. Um, I believe we're going to end up doing Math 7 and Math 8 probably in a school year because he tends to do two lessons um, a day. I would like to say I'm not a major fan of teaching textbooks. As an educator, I'm just not. But he wants to do it. He wants to try it out. He's old enough to have a say in his education and what he uses. And as long as it's working and he's grasping um, and it works for me, I'm going to be okay with it. But as an educator, it's definitely not my first pick. But we're going to go with it and we'll see. So maybe I'll do a review maybe halfway through the year to let you know how it's working. But I'm gonna get over myself and allow him to have some breathing room to choose what he wants to do and we'll see how that works. Um, because I don't think that teaching textbooks is adequate enough for the entire school year, um, I downloaded a review. I believe it's called Five a Day Math Review. It's by Teachers Thrive on Teachers Pay Teachers, and I really liked the way that she had um, the review laid out because it was simple in terms of you just, on a Monday or on a day one, you have five problems in like a block on the page. The next day, five problems, the same block, and you just continue to do that. So I'm going to share, I know I shared on Facebook um, that I was going to be using this TPT unit, but I also want to share here just to let you see what it looks like. So, let me give you, yeah, here we go. So, I'm not sure, maybe I'll have to zoom in for you, but as you can see here, it has Monday, and then we have five problems to do. Tuesday, five problems to do. You're going to follow that same sequence out Wednesday, Thursday, um, which we tend to homeschool about four days out of the week with a bonus, or more like four and a half days because they do a half day. Um, and then on that fifth day, there is an assessment that pretty much, now it's 20 problems because five times four is 20 and they've done five problems a day for four days. And each problem in the assessment is the same kind of problem that they work throughout the week. So you can see here, this is 12 problems for week one. So I have to flip it on the back for you in order to get um, to 20. And then one of the, my favorite feature of this is the era analysis. So I have the um, score key or the teacher's key, um, already printed and ready to go for him. And so he'll just be able to check and it'll be easy for me to see if there are any holes and gaps um, here as he's using this. Maybe even in the past, I'm not going to put it all on them. But I really like the content and the scope and sequence, the schema here. And so I thought it supplemented well. I went and I downloaded the... Um, the uh, table of contents, sorry. I downloaded the table of contents and went through the different topics and I went through the entire CD ROM to just see what was missing and a lot of what I am missing for like grade seven slash grade eight is present in here. So this is how we're gonna supplement. He can do his lesson and then he can come here and then just quickly um, solve those five problems. All right, so that is our core. Our Teacher Thrive 5-A-Day Math Review and our Teaching Textbooks. Our 
supplement to our core is going to be everything you need to ace math in one big fat notebook. We've been using this also since grade five. We like it. We're just going to continue to use it as a reference and or supplement. Um, the other one that we're using is the Cartoon Guide to Algebra. We started this in like the second semester of the last past school year, 17, 18 school year. And so we're just going to keep going with it. It's cartoonish. It's kid friendly. And it really introduces algebraic concepts that he just needs. He's going to need for grade 7 and grade 8. Kind of no way around it. So that is going to conclude just like our core mathematics 7. Now I'm going to transition over into the business and finance portion of our math. So I'm going to start with where we left off last year. Last year we began the consumer math series by Steck Vaughn. And we began with the mathematics of banking and credit. Um, he liked it. I like it. I split it up into like three sections and I knew that third section we wouldn't get to until grade seven. So we're going to start with this one and finish out that last third of the book. And then we're going to segue right into um, the mathematics of work. And one of the things that I like, let me go over banking and credit, which I did in, in my video last year, but I'll to it here so you can kind of see the difference all together in one video. One of the things I like about it is before it gets started, it's break, broken down into threes and into threes. And before we get started, um, it always reviews math skills and concepts. So in the banking and credit, it reviewed whole numbers, fractions, decimals, and percents, mean, medium, mode, basic operations on a calculator, and computing mentally and estimating. And then it transitioned into the second part, which is checking and savings accounts, which he was all into that last year in grade six. So that really was amazing. Checking accounts, reconciling, checking accounts, statements, saving accounts, and simple and compound interest. We did, I skipped compound interest on purpose um, for grade six. It was a lot. And then the third part, which we're going to introduce in the beginning of this school year, 1819 school year, is credit. Using credit cards, credit finance charges, overdraft checking, taking out a loan, and installment buying. And now that he has um, his own check card, that'll be more relevant for him, and that's what I was waiting on. Once we get done with that credit portion, we're going to go right into mathematics of work. Again, it's broken down into threes. So the first is the same, that math, skills, and concepts. The same one that I went over in the first one. Whole numbers, fraction decimals and percents, mean, medium, mode, basic operations on the calculator, computing mentally and estimating. So basically, the basic skills that, uh, basic math skills that you need in order to do any math past sixth grade. And then it goes into the part two, part-time and summer jobs, finding a job, computing pay, tips, and Social Security. I'm not sure that we'll do Social Security, but we're definitely going to do finding a job and computing pay. He's all into that right now as he develops his own business plan as to how he's going to run a business and what does that look like or how he's going to get a job and how much money does he need to earn and save up for this. And he's been doing a good job with that. So I think this will just help part-time and summer jobs, and he's almost not quite. He still has two years before he can apprentice out, but we're going to be working this series over the next two years anyway, so he should be ready when it's time. And then the third part is full-time work. Hourly wages and overtime pay, time sheets and time cards, salary, piecework, commissions, health insurance, life insurance. I think we're going to probably not do life insurance, but that third part I think is going to go with us into grade eight. I think it'll just be more relevant to do um, as a almost 14 year old than right now as an almost 13 year old so other books in the series is the mathematics of trades and professions as well as the mathematics of automobiles and transportation the mathematics of housing and taxes and the mathematics of personal finance and investments we'll probably run through all of that i'm not sure about automobiles and transportation but we probably will we'll just continue to go throughout it until it's done Probably will be 15 or so by the time we get done. Okay, so that's what we're doing in terms of our consumer math or our business and finance, like the core of that. And then I have some supplement. Um, we are going to be reading Nine Steps to Becoming Rich from the Inside Out, um, Realionaire by Farrah Gray. And we are also going to be reading Escape the Rat Race, Learn How Money Works, and Become a Rich Kid. 
so it looks like this and I'm trying to hide the green because it won't pick it it'll go straight through it so um, escape the rat race we're gonna go through this together the last thing that I have is a financial literacy unit and it's something that I got off of um, TPT I'm gonna quickly open and I'm gonna show a little bit of it um, so I went ahead and just prepped it all for him. There's like checks for him to simulate, writing checks, which that's what the consumer math did as well. So he'll already have plenty. But I like that it walks him through his personal self, like cost for college. It's a little checkbook that they had me put together for him. Um, and then they give examples. Like here are the our cars. You have to choose one of these cars and decide if you're going to buy it used or lease and how does that affect your budget. The same thing with the house. Are you going to live in a modern condo, a cozy apartment, a downtown high line? So he gets to make these decisions. So moving on with the financial unit, one of my favorite things that I like is it's going to walk him through. And I'm going to protrude this out a little bit like monthly bills, what that means, what he has to do how he solves it, how he figures it out, uh, etc. There's also like a financial unit booklet, but I printed it on green paper, so I'm not going to be able to show it. And then there's different worksheets, um, financial planning sheet, a housing follow-up sheet, creating a monthly budget. So we're going to walk through that because this is more, this unit is more personal where he has to look at a variety of options and he has to decide which one he wants to do. And so he'll learn a lot about himself and what he wants and, really get an idea for what you want, how much does that cost, and can you realistically do that, or what choices you need to make in business, in work, or in education in order to have what you say you want to have, and it walks them through that well, and I really love it. So we'll also be um, completing that financial aid unit. So that is it for us for grade seven. Um, just to review, I have our core, like math seven, that he just has to have as a typical seventh grader. We're going to be doing teaching textbooks as well as one more in order to kind of supplement what I feel like is lacking. We're also adding business and finance in the area of consumer math. This school year, we're going to be working more so with credit and then also with part-time and summer jobs and all that's included with that. And then we're going to be reading two books that talk about wealth and riches and then we're going to complete a financial um, unit financial unit self unit for him to decide uh, what he wants to do as an adult and how much money he wants to make and what can he afford etc all right let me know if you have any questions i will share um, the tpt download for the financial unit and the teacher thrive review in case you're interested in that as a matter of fact i'll just throw it up in the card above and that's what we're doing for math 2018-2019. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If so, please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, shalom.